Israel Arbeiter was 14 years old when the Germans first entered his city of Plotsk, Poland, in early September 1939. One of five boys, his only crime was that he was Jewish. First came the German army, then the SS, and Gestapo. And people started to disappear. With the uh, occupying the city by the SS, the occupation forces, and depriving us of the civil rights, at the age of 14, I was declared a slave, condemned to death for the only crime that I committed because I was born to Jewish parents. Arbeiter and his family remained together in Plotsk until 1942, when the Nazis adopted the final solution of the Jewish question. All Jews were to be exterminated, either worked or starved to death or gassed in the concentration camps. We were ordered out from our homes, leave everything there, assemble in the marketplace where a selection took place. Uh, the young and um, those that were capable to work were taken on one side, the very young and the elderly selected on the other side. We were, myself and two of my brothers, were uh, selected among the young ones to go to, to go to work. My parents, my father, my mother, and my seven-year-old brother were sent to a death camp to Treblinka, and they were murdered by uh, gazing and cremated. Um, that was, that was probably, that was the, the most horrible day of my life, which is still with me. I seeing my parents for the very last time, knowing that I won't see them anymore. Arbeiter, younger and stronger than most of his fellow Jews, survived two more years at a forced labor facility. In 1944, as the Russians moved west, the Polish teenager was given a one-way ticket in an overcrowded, wretched-smelling cattle car to the most infamous of all the Nazi death camps. There was absolutely no doubt in his mind he would die there. We arrived, I remember, early in the morning, and we could see inside people with the striped uniforms. And, um, and now we knew that this is Auschwitz. There was a selection by the uh, infamous Dr. Mengles, who, with the uh, movement, with the point of one finger, decided who was to live and who was to die. So there again, there were two columns, who that does, in his opinion, are capable to work, and the others went one direction, and we went the other direction. Uh, we never saw the people that were in the other column Again, you're in Auschwitz now, and the only, out, the only way out of here is through the chimneys. A, 18,651. See, they had in Auschwitz, they went to 200,000. Thus, these were the numbers only of people that went into the camp. The people that were killed didn't get any numbers. And Auschwitz was the only camp that they gave numbers. To know that such a place ever existed on this planet, operated by human beings, by a government, the atrocities, what took place there, is just unbelievable and cannot be described. And when they have little kids between five and 10 years old that were walking, they made them walk, you know, from the, from the selection area to the uh, guest chambers area. And when they close the door of the guest chambers and you hear those little kids banging on the walls, on the door, screaming, yelling for their mothers to no avail. In April of 1945, Izzy Arbeiter and any survivors left at Auschwitz were sent from the camp in Poland to Germany where the Nazis planned to eliminate any remaining witnesses to their death camps. 
A month later, however, the German army surrendered. There would be those alive who could tell their stories. Five and a half years of the condition and the guard and being ordered, being told what to do and live under the worst condition. And now, what does it mean to be free? Izzy Arbeiter's parents and younger brother died in the concentration camps. Miraculously, two other brothers survived. 